is my first time um, kind of it's really weird that like knowing that this is my first hybrid setup <laughs> so it's really strange knowing that I'm on a big screen in a real conference room so um, I just need to get over that for a second while I go forward so hi everybody um, thank you so much to, uh, to Isviz for having me and just inviting me to teach a workshop so what I'll do now is I'll just share my screen oh wait I the host has disabled screen sharing what should I do so rather than allow you to to be to do screen sharing I'm going to make you a co-host so it will be your responsibility okay, okay. all right so Wonderful. you're blaming all yourself because right. you're a host now we're on the same Thank side. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, well, that's a relief. So you're going to see um, the uh, you see the the the, the standard um, Mac background. So let me just bring up my slides here, and we're off. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I yeah. Thank, thank you to Mushan for that wonderful introduction. I'll just introduce myself. A little bit more although he told you everything so yeah i am stephanie i'm a london-based designer artist and author and i mainly work on creating experimental data design projects and then also doing things like teach data visualization workshops and um, many of the projects that i create they don't look like a traditional visualization or chart but instead look like something different like the sort of projects that you see on screen where you know, data can be um, like hoppable, wearable, or danceable, or be in museums and be very playful. Um, and then, um, as was mentioned, you know, a lot of the projects I create, they're created by hand using a lo-fi analog approach, um, including a better known project of mine that was hand-drawn, um, Dear Data, a year-long project with the designer Georgia Lupi, where every week we collected our personal data on a, on a topic analyzed that data, drew our visualizations and their legends on a postcard and then posted them to each other. Um, and then, you know, at the end of the, and then, you know, we'd be receiving these postcards at, um, from the other person at our address. And then we would read um, and learn more about the other person's life this way. And so a selection of some of my postcards um, from that year are on screen. And yeah, it's just a sign that I, I like drawing. I like drawing data. I like working this very lo-fi manual way. Um, also more recently, um, I have a new book out with my friend Miriam Quick. Um, I'm sorry, but authors are contractually obliged to hustle their latest book, um, but just because I'm proud of it and I like it. Um, I am a book, I am a portal to the universe. It was published by Penguin. And I think this is also a really good example of the sort of work I make where this book, while not handmade, is hand and human scaled so it uses itself as a measuring device to um, kind of highlight the wonders of the universe on a one-to-one -one scale where every interaction with the book or the book, book's page thickness volume weight page area and more actually communicate data so you might have to slam the book shut as hard as you can to hear how noisy sunshine would sound if space was in a vacuum or um, you know, find out exactly how many stars are born and exploded during the time it takes to turn a page. And it won uh, the UK, Ro UK Royal Society's Young People's Book Prize 2021, which is, it celebrates excellent STEM writing. And um, best of all, it was based on the voting of all of these lovely young people. So, sorry, I have to put that in there because I'm very proud of myself. So anyway, back on, well, proud of us. Um, now on to the workshop. Um, so my workshop um, that I gave with, um, as part of ISVIS uh, was a, a DataViz drawing class. And so in this workshop, it um, was really at trying to be as off screen as possible, given the fact that we were teaching it um, virtually and using Miro boards and Zooms to do this. Um, but, um, you know, it was focusing on sketching data on visualizing data by hand, and really about providing participants with starting points and strategies for creating custom data visualization. So moving beyond um, kind of off the peg charts and learning how to custom, you know, create all sorts of visualizations for to really be tailored to their data set. 
So the this drawing class um, came, the idea came from a traditional life drawing class where people, um, you know, will have a bunch of easels around a person, a, a, you know, a nude model in the middle of the room. Um, whereas um, for us, instead of a nude model, um, data was what was on our plinth. So we were drawing data. Data was our model for the day. Um, and so just um, doing this through um, drawing and exploring data using practices that come from actual drawing classes or art schools to do this. So kind of merging drawing and data together. Um, and so, like I said, it was um, as off screen as possible. Um, and uh, yeah, I just emphasize the value of starting data projects through sketching, through being off screen. Um, and so some of the reasons I talked about why this is good are on screen. You know, it's really great to start off screen uh, <laughs> uh, when you're visualizing data. So that way you're keeping your mind open and you're not just referring to um, kind of code libraries that are already created or standard visualization methods, but it kind of forces you to think big and think about anything that's possible and the right solution as opposed to being, you know, forced into a specific direction by a tool. Um, it also helps you tap into um, that tacit knowledge that we all have as professionals, design professionals, you know, where we're just allowed to draw and be free and just let our mind wander and come up with ideas that way instead of having to be very explicit and precise um, when you're moving into a design program or software, um, you know, fine tuning all the details and getting bogged down in that. And then lastly, it's just really accessible. You know, all you need is a pencil to get started visualizing um, data. And I think that was really evident in the type of uh, participants that were in my workshop, which ranged from students and people who were just learning about data and data visualization who were coming at it anew to seasoned professionals. So it was a really wide range. Um, um, also, a lot of the workshop revolved around setting up challenges and constraints um, that would force participants to just draw, get something on the page, not be too press precious, but just move quickly and come up with ideas and iterate very quickly. And also, I think, you know, as uh, communication designers or designers, um, you know, I guess we're all used to this, that saying that constraints feed creativity. So also trying to inspire people to be creative regardless of, uh, with data, um, you know, no matter what tools they're using or what job they're doing, you know, just that you can still make nice small, small steps forward um, in regards to visualizing your data. So um, I started by giving an intro to data viz through the language of drawing. So highlighting how if data visualization is a systematic rule-based design practice, we can then um, find and take inspiration in rule-based uh, drawings. Uh, so we were looking at the um, wall drawings of the American minimalist artist Saul Lewitz, who would create rules like what you see on the left um, that then draftsmen would follow to install and draw his artwork in um, galleries on the right. Um, to, um, so that was, you know, from the, the 60s, but to the present day with a design studio, Studio Moniker, who um, have a conditional design workshop that documents um, documents uh, like a workshop they had where people were coming up with drawing games similar, similarly written um, to Solowitz wall drawings where by following um, the rules set out in each game, um, participants could create a certain type of drawing. Um, to the work of Sam Winston, a, um, an artist in London who is, doesn't create, he probably wouldn't say he creates data visualizations, but it is, he, that's what he's doing. So that he's here, he's creating a drawing where um, for every breath he takes for 15 hours, um, he draws a line where this um, end result, um, this end drawing effectively is a, is a visualization of his breath for that time. And then, um, you know, talk, um, create, we're also creating a recipe for how data viz works. Uh, where uh, this is why I try to put forward where, you know, we are the artist, the, the designer, um, like Saul Lewitt or these um, other artists who are coming up with the rules for mapping data to our visual variables, our graphic elements, and all the while thinking about our 
innate sense of visual perception of um, as humans to ensure that the rules that we create for mapping data to form work with our innate sense making skills instead of fighting against them. So that's my data visualization recipe, where then I inspire people to um, kind of imagine they're like those uh, drawing artists when they're coming up with their visualization rules. Um, so then we got stuck in, um, starting with uh, data drawing challenges to focus on um, kind of like short exercises to get people thinking about different parts of the data viz design process where um, all they had was a dark crayon or charcoal and then some sheets of paper, um, starting with uh, testing their materials, um, basically creating a repository of marks that then could theoretically be encoded with data to looking at rule-based drawing, uh, like Saul LeWitt and the other artists to get a feel for kind of a rule-based approach to um, visual variable brainstorming, visualizing two numbers against each other, 75 and 37, which is a, a standard uh, pro, um, visualization exercise, uh, which was originally created by Santiago Ortiz, but here we're kind of looking at different ways of visualizing these um, numbers in a more artful experimental way. And then exercises um, kind of testing how a visualization rule would play out across a small data set and assessing them for what, you know, which um, work better with our innate sense of visual perception than others um, to um, bringing it all together and creating data gesture drawings, which is like a really fast drawing of a tiny data set. And so all of these were done in five minutes, like quick drawings of a very strange data set I found, which was um, time until motion sickness of three subjects across two experiments. So I really like this uh, um, kind of very evocative uh, uh, motion sickness drawing on the left. And it's just really nice to see what people come up with in a short amount of time. So then racing through the net of our class project where we were visualizing a very playful data set 20 best-selling albums of all time, according to Wikipedia. I know it's not a statistically a hardcore uh, data set, but it works for us. Um, where th these are my drawings. Um, they um, planned their underlying architecture. Um, so how they're using the location variable, um, visual variable on the page to decide where their album glyphs would go. So um, they um, they created custom visualization rules, visualizing album data as data glyphs. So like a few data attributes compressed into one designed element that could be compared and contrasted across multiple albums. And then they um, created the whole visualization. Um, so these are what the final results look like. Um, now I will say a couple people broke the rules and they, they moved onto the computer. So, um, but it's all right, we'll forgive them. So there's a really great response and lots of different um, options. So I'm gonna share a few. Um, if you're in the audience, you should just uh, raise your hand, a uh, quick run through. Um, so um, SAR um, did an exploration where you're using like the volume, like the size of volume to show genre where like the, the noisier the genre, the higher this kind of um, like kind of waveform sound waveform would be and i just really like the um, mark making um that is encoded with data i think that's really nice um to nitsan and if anyone's there just raise your hands or just look around or run away um uh, using uh, cacti to show um how a lot of female artists in this data set were really coming to the fore in the 90s um and uh, just showing how they yeah they were there weren't so many women in the um, 70s, well, yeah, the 70s or 80s, but in the 90s, these women pop decks came to the fore. So using visual metaphors of records like Leah G. Lee, um, and again, um, encoding data into, you know, different uh, ways we've stored and transmitted music over the ages from Sage um, to more abstract representations, but still, I guess, revolving around the roundness of albums or CDs from Ellie, um, showing, uh, yeah, the same data, <laughs> 20 best selling albums. Um, and um, yeah, like which had um, data points like the, the self identified gender of the artists and whether they were a solo or a group, um, genre, 
um, what type of album it was and the number of sales and so on, the date of release. And uh, then Zune, whose um, name I forgot to put in the top corner, but it was from Zune who um, stayed really mono and minimal in her um, visualization where you can see her, her process um, when I'm coming up with this uh, visualization approach over on the left. Um, and um, I think, yeah, so challenging herself to kind of represent all the data using only one color again. So trying to come up with an idea within constraints she set herself. And the thing that I think is really nice about it is uh, in her progress, you see the design process so clearly where, you know, coming up with the rules to create a custom visualization for mapping um, your data to, to graphic elements, it's a process of um, coming up with an idea, testing it, and then changing it and refining it. And so you can really see how she changed and evolved her design through the process. And I think that's nice to see. So just to sum up, um, I think uh, really with this, um, I hope that everyone who was on the workshop and maybe all of you just this idea of seeing constraints as a creative challenge and, you know, pushing against them and, uh, you know, hopefully um, becoming more creative as part of that. Um, and then also just that um, off screen sketching, you know, not every visualization should be drawn, of course, but there is a value to starting off screen. You know, it only takes five or 10 minutes um, to kind of come up with a more considered approach or move your visualization one step further and I think that in our workshop, in the fast pace that people are really able to, to do a lot in such a short amount of time is testament to the fact that it doesn't take, take much time to kind of evolve your process. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie. Um, anybody here uh, participated in that workshop and would like to throw a word? Joel? Uh, hi, Stephanie. I, I didn't really participate. I was kind of an observer, partly observer, partly participant. It, it, it was a great workshop. I really enjoyed it. We, um, <coughs> um, you know, it enabled me to see how the design process. I'm not a designer, uh, so it enabled me just to see how the design process worked uh, with many people or with many um, students. So it was a, it was a first time uh, for me, um, and I, I did. Uh, participating in the first sketches and again for, for someone who never draw at all was very enlightening me enlightening me for enlightening for me um, to, to see these exercises so thank you and uh, I think it was a great workshop thanks anybody else has a question or a remark yes please I just wanted to say that I got your book as a present and I love it very much. Thank you. Can you hear me? No. So, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to say that Boris got your book as a present and he loves it very much. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. Thank you. And I bought all, your, all of your books, and I love them very much. So, uh, um, Thank you. Um, anybody else? Last thought. So this is actually the last talk of ISVIS. Um, uh, so thank you, Stephanie. And, uh, and thank you for the workshop. And it's been... It's been a great inspiration, and you continue to be a great inspiration for us. So thank you so very much for that. Um, and just uh, kind of to conclude, I guess, to conclude the day, um, we are very thankful for the opportunity to be with you in the same room again, um, and um, and for the workshops to work and for, for our international, we, we talked about uh, a lot about going from, uh, from independent to, to uh, community uh, through the last session. I think uh, we've done a bit of that through the conference this year by opening, uh, opening it to an international 
um, audience and we indeed got an international audience uh, for the workshops and and for the online streaming so um, and definitely it would be expanding even more when uh, the talks are online so thank you very much for that and thank you very much for my uh, partners uh, Mira Levy and Joel Lanier <laughs> next year next year in Haifa yeah next year in Haifa um, that would that would allow allow me to to rest for two days, for two years maybe, um, and uh <coughs> and uh, uh, thanks for Oshri uh, Kohenader and for um, uh, Ella Ella Tandler um, and everybody who helped us uh, to put it together and thank you to, for the speakers and for the audience and thank you thank you thank you.